no matter where you travel in Illinois, historic bridges are part of the landscape. These quiet monuments to transportation and engineering history are a link to the past that both visitors and residents can enjoy. Bridges with movable spans were developed to keep navigable waterways free of obstruction in locations where building fixed bridges with sufficient clearance was costly or impractical. The vertical lift bridge is one such example of a movable bridge. Early lift bridges were developed in 1872 by Squire Whipple. They were used over small waterways in New York and adjacent northeastern states. These were typically small structures with comparatively short lifts. In 1894, one of the first monumental lift bridges was built in Chicago by J. A. Waddell. It carried Halstead Street across the South Chicago River with a span of 130 feet and a vertical clearance of 150 feet. The previous year, Waddell had proposed a similarly scoped lift bridge for Duluth, Minnesota, but it was never built. Of the over 600,000 bridges active in the United States, only 184 of those are operational lift bridges. Of the nine lift bridges that were built in Illinois, three were utilized on major highways. All three crossed the Illinois River. The bridge in LaSalle was demolished in 2003. The other two are still standing and are within 40 miles of each other. The Joe Page Bridge in Hardin and the Florence Bridge. The Florence Bridge is a nine-span Parker through truss bridge with four fixed exterior spans flanking a movable central span that lifts to accommodate the passage of river traffic. Towers on either side of the central span house machinery that works in tandem to lift it. A bridge tender controls the moving span from an operational booth located on top of that span. The overall length of the bridge is 3,171 feet, and the lift portion has a vertical clearance of approximately 65 to 85 feet depending on water levels. Florence, Illinois was built around a small river landing and ferry crossing in the early 1800s. By 1926, discussions to replace the ferry with a bridge were well underway. Construction was slated to begin that year and be completed by November 1st, 1928. The contractor, Stressenreuter Brothers, was a Chicago-based company that had completed several bridge and highway projects for the state. Unfortunately, a series of floodings delayed construction late into 1927. By the beginning of 1928, water levels and frustration with the slow pace of progress were both running high. When a local chamber of commerce suggested that the delays were politically motivated, the chief highway engineer, Frank Sheets, noted that the river had been upwards of 11 feet above flood stage over the course of the previous 12 months. Even if the coffer dams used to construct the bridge pilings could have been built when the flood waters were lower, it would have endangered the workers when the water level inevitably rose again. However, despite these concerns, 1928 was a productive year. By the end of the year, the only bridge components left to be built were the piers to either side of the lift span and the span itself. Bridge sections were built at the edge of the river and floated into place on barges. Four barges were used to float the central lift span into place. 1929 brought ice and more flooding, which delayed construction again. Despite the benefit of the doubt in 1928, this time around Stressenreuter Brothers was held accountable. An investigation followed and they were dismissed. A new contractor was hired and despite the numerous delays, Florence Bridge finally opened on May 19, 1930. The bridge at Florence was a benefit locally and nationally. Primarily, it eliminated the necessity of a ferry. The ferry was dependent on high water and flooding conditions and was also limited in capacity. This resulted in frequent traffic backup. As well, cost to use the ferry was an issue. In 1929, its last year of operation, 
the cost of the ferry was 75 cents, a modern exchange equivalent of $13.20. Florence Bridge connected local booming agricultural communities in Scott and Pike counties. According to the Waukegan News Sun, the opening of the Florence Bridge saves motorists about 30 minutes in getting across the Illinois River. Even with the opening of the Valley City Eagle Bridges to the north in 1991, Florence Bridge is still a necessary route for farm traffic, since farm equipment is prohibited from traveling I-72. At the national level, the Florence Bridge was an important piece of transcontinental travel. It extended US-36, connecting Indianapolis and Denver, as well as connecting 36 to US-54, allowing westerly travel to Texas. At the time, it was considered one of the most important structures to be built in the state. In recent history, though, the Florence Bridge has a penchant for closures. These closures were primarily for maintenance and renovation, one of which closed the bridge for nine months in 2012. Some closures, however, were caused by barge accidents on the river, one as recently as 2019. It's been discussed that the current shipping lane is on the narrow side for modern river traffic. Cost of upkeep, along with the age of the structure, are key problems taken into consideration for the replacement of this bridge. Modern transportation needs place a variety of demands on infrastructure. A delicate balance is required when seeking to preserve historically significant structures and maintaining safe transportation and shipping corridors. Though it's not practical to save every historic bridge, it is possible to document them so that their importance can remain part of our state's story for generations to come. 